Hi class, we are on section 7.5, algebraically defined vectors and the dot product. Okay, so today we're going to go over a lot of what we went over on the last video. Um, however, now we're going to look at the algebra of adding vectors and subtracting them and scaling them and things like that. We're also going to talk about a very important operation called the dot product and how we can find the angle that lies between two vectors when we place them um, tail to tail, right? Or from initial point to initial point, okay? So I covered a few of these things slightly in the last video um, with a couple of Desmos animations. So I'm not going to repeat those here. You can go to the last video. Maybe I will. I don't know. I, I'm, we'll see once I'm done with the video um, how I feel. But uh, let's go ahead and get started, okay? So we had the geometric interpretations of vectors. So now we're going to work on the algebraic interpretations of these vectors, right? So a position vector is what we call a vector that's basically on an axis, right? So like I said in the last video, we put the initial side at the origin, and then the vector goes into whatever direction it needs to go to, okay? The way that we label this vector u in this case is by identifying while it is uh, initial point is at the origin is how far in the x direction it moves and how far in the y direction it moves so basically where the terminal point ends at creates the components of my vector right so here if my vector is terminal point at a b it means I go in the x direction until a and then to the uh, y direction up a distance of B okay uh, position vector U with this endpoint at a B is generally written with the brackets a B so this bracket notation generally no, uh, sig signifies that we have a vector it actually has a much more important uh, definition so when you go to later higher level math courses you'll generally still see vectors written in this parentheses notation and not this bracket notation because these brackets mean something different in other uh, math courses right so for this course we're going to stick to the notation with the bracket so if you see these brackets with the point a b that means that you are looking at the vector um, with a b so this is a standard notation for physics however later on in math this notation is used for something different so it can be confusing so generally whatever notation someone uses that's the notation that they stick with okay so just to make that clear so here we would say a, or I'm sorry, u is the vector given by the components a and b. Okay, so the vertical component is the b, and the horizontal component is a. Just think of it as your x and your y, right? So x is always horizontal, y or this b is always vertical, right? So it goes horizontal first, and then vertical, or x, y is the easier way to think of that. Okay, uh, the position, the positive angle between the x-axis and wherever it is that your vector lies at creates an angle of theta right and again as I said in the last video that's why we talk about vectors using trigonometry that's why these vectors are in a trig class okay um, the magnitude and direction so we talked about magnitude uh, in the last video again we said that magnitude was the length so if we are thinking of this as an axis and it's rotating and it creates an angle and we have an A value and a B value, well, that's just like a radius of a circle that is rotating through an angle of theta. So we can always find the length of a radius by looking at the square root of A squared plus B squared or by using the Pythagorean theorem, right? So the length of a vector is always given by again not absolute value but the length of u is the square root of a squared plus b squared again that's really just coming from that r equals square root of x squared plus I'm sorry x squared plus y squared from a circle right or from any of our trig definitions that we have for the unit circle okay so the direction angle theta satisfies tan of theta is b over a so again tan is basically y over x or my sine over my cosine right so it's all the same thing because this is 
so similar to a radius in a unit circle where this is cosine and this is sine, right? So this is x value, y value. We're just calling them a and b. Okay. So again, a cannot be zero, otherwise you have an unidentified, or I'm sorry, an undefined value. Um, so let's look at an example. Okay. So example one, we're finding the magnitude and direction angle. Okay. So the direction angle we can find by tan of theta. To find theta, we would use tan inverse okay so that's how we'll find theta so I always hate this definition they should always just say theta is equal to tan inverse of B over a that's an easier way because yeah this relationship is true but you generally want the magnitude the length and the direction the angle so you generally would say hey theta equals this I don't I'm just ranting right now but it always I'm always confounded why they don't just say that okay I'll write my own textbook and we'll say that <clears throat> anyways Find the magnitude and direction angle for this vector. Okay, so the vector u is given by the components 3 and negative 2. So on the Cartesian plane, I go over 3 and down 2, and then I draw a line to my um, axis or to my origin. I'm sorry. So that means that this is my a, this is my b. Other way of saying that is that this is my cosine, that's my sine, right? So my theta is given here or we can do the remaining angle right the uh, um, the reference angle if we need to instead this is what we normally would do so our magnitude here is just going to be 3 squared plus negative 2 squared and then square root the sum of that right so that's 9 plus 4 and so that's going to be square root of 13 is my magnitude remember magnitude is always positive okay so, so we're square root, so you don't have to worry about that. But we always have the positive value because it's a length. A length is always positive, right? My direction angle is given by tan of theta. Um, tan of theta will equal b over a, so negative 2 over 3. Okay. And using that information, I need to solve for theta. So uh, theta will be tan inverse of negative 2 thirds. Okay. I'm adding 360 degrees unless I wanted to use the reference angle, right? So 326 degrees or using the reference angle would be uh, 360 minus this or, you know, 33.7, okay? So let's talk about the vertical and horizontal components or those values A and B that make up the components of my vectors, right? So the horizontal and vertical components respectively, respectively of a vector u having magnitude of magnitude of u and a direction angle of theta are given by the following. So a is the magnitude of u times cosine theta. Again, remember, a is basically a cosine, okay? And we're extending that by the length of the radius of a circle, right? So before we're talking about this as a r cosine theta when, when we do parametric equations. Um, so it's very similar to that where here we're multiplying by the length of the radius, which is magnitude of r vector, right? So b is going to be the same thing. It'll be magnitude of sine theta, okay? So another way of thinking of that is that u is a b is going to be the vector u magnitude of u cosine theta comma magnitude u sine theta right and if you wanted to you can pull out that magnitude of u and have it written as magnitude of u times cosine theta sine theta inside of these bracket notations okay that's an equivalent manner of writing those so let's move on to our second example okay so let's say you have a vector w has a magnitude of 25 and a direction angle of 41.7 degrees. Okay, so we want to find the horizontal and vertical components of this vector. So we are going to use um, this form, right? We know the magnitude and we know the angle, so we can figure out its values using the sine and cosine of the angle that are given to us, right? So find the horizontal and vertical components. So <clears throat> we have our vector that's given to us right at a 41.7 degrees we have the magnitude so if we want to figure things out we're just gonna plug in the 
uh, formulas that we have, right? So A is going to be 25 times cosine 41.7 degrees. You can plug that into our calculator and get 18.7, right? Same thing for B. It's going to be 25 sine 41.7, and we're going to get about 16.6. .6. So our component-wise uh, vector is 18.7, 16.6. Always A first, then B. Right. Example three, <clears throat> writing vectors in the form AB. So again, write each vector in the figure in the form AB. So we're going to do the exact same thing. So here for you, okay, our angle is 60, magnitude 5. We'll do exactly what we just did for that vector. For V, same thing, magnitude 2, our angle is 180. Okay. For W, a magnitude of 6, and the angle is 280. I suggest that you pause the video now and you go ahead and do this on your own so that we can check our answers against each other. Um, I know you do this in your own write-up and the submissions that I'm having you guys do for my class, um, but go ahead and do this anyways just so you can make sure you're on the right track, okay? So let's go ahead and pause it and do it on your own in three, two, one. Okay, so hopefully you went ahead and did that and you're back to check your work. Um, so let's go ahead and get started, okay? So for you, A is going to be 5 times cosine 60, right? And B is 5 sine 60. We can plug these in. We already know what these are because these are our special angles, right? So we have 5 halves and 5 root 3 over 2. For V, it's nice because we're on cosine of 180, right? So 2 cosine 180, 2 sine 180. So this one will be a negative 2, and this one will be 0, right? Okay. And then for W, we have a non-traditional, non-standard angle of 280, right? So we'll just plug these into our calculators and get an approximation. Um, since these are our non-special angles that we're used to, uh, we just have to calculate that the best we can, unless you want to do an addition and subtraction formula, uh, which I'm sure you don't want to do because those things are terrible, right? So... <clears throat> Let's look at some vector operations, okay? Let A, B, C, D, and K all be real values, right? So again, they can be uh, integers, whole numbers, negatives, uh, radicals, irrational, rational, doesn't matter, but they're not complex numbers, they are real numbers, okay? Uh, so if I want A, B plus C, D, so one vector plus another, so again, we saw this in the previous video, so We'll go through this kind of quickly. We basically just add the components, okay? My resultant vector will be A plus C for the first term and B plus D for the second term. So we're basically adding the X's together and adding the Y's together, all right? So that's how we add vectors. If I want to multiply by a scalar, I multiply both my X and my Y by that scalar value. Again, if you want to see the animations for that, it's somewhere towards the beginning middle-ish of the 7.4 video, right? So again, if I'm multiplying by a scalar, then my scalar basically distributes into the x and y of my component notation for my vectors, okay? Um, if u is a1, a2, then negative u, right? So the um, additive identity is just like multiplying by negative 1. So I get negative a1 and negative a2. If I want to subtract two vectors, it's like adding a negative. So I'm really just, again, subtracting the components, okay? It's like adding a negative, and I just end up subtracting the components of my vectors. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do our next example. Let u equal negative 2, 1. So again, you move to negative 2 in the x direction and plus 1 in the y direction. Let v be 4, 3. So we go to 4. And up to 3. So we're going to find and illustrate the following, right? So if we add these two together, we're adding the components, right? So we already talked about how to add these together geometrically. We had a whole video on it, right? I keep referencing it, but um, so basically, if I went, uh, if I finished the parallelogram here, the new vector would be the one that makes, goes across that diagonal. Okay, its terminal point should be at 4 plus negative 2, so at 2, and at 3 plus 1, which is 4. So if we do this diagonal here, at 2, 4 would be the end of my diagonal, 
and that would be the new vector okay so negative one sorry negative two one and four three add them component wise together so x with x y with y I'm gonna get two four so over two and up four is where that new vector should be okay so again if you dotted line the diagonal here it would be the diagonal right uh, let u be again same vectors if we do the scalar negative 2u, we're going to take u, it'll pull it in the negative direction and stretch it to be twice as long, right? And we can figure out where it would end by taking its components and multiplying it by negative 2. So I'll end up with a 4 and a negative 2, right? And that will bring me out here somewhere, okay? All right, it's just as we said. Okay. Uh, C is to scale u by 3, scale v by negative 2, and then add them together. Or you can say scale v by 2 and then subtract them. It's the same thing. Um, so generally when we do this, we just write it out algebraically, find the end result, and then graph the new result, right? So here we are already scaling one of them by 3 and the other by 2, okay? So really when we did that, we multiplied three times the first uh, set of vectors, set of components, two times the second set, okay? And then we add them together to find our result. So negative four, sorry, negative 14, negative three. So when we did this, let's go back a couple scales, right? I had to take one of them and pull it in the negative direction, right? To get that negative eight, negative six. Right, so then when I add the components together, I get the 14, negative 14, negative 3, and that'll give me my new vector. Right, so unit vectors a unit vector is a vector that has a length of one. Okay, remember magnitude and length are the same thing. Right, so a unit vector has a length of one. We call i and j the standard unit vectors, they are the unit vectors that are a distance of one in the and are perpendicular to each other on the axes x and y okay so i we say is one zero j we say is zero one okay these are very important vectors if you're in physics you'll use these all the time um, you probably won't come across these in a math class again until maybe a little bit in pre-calculus but most calc three these two things are used everywhere okay um, so they are very important uh, but they're not used a lot until they are important later, right? So any vector a b can be expressed in the form a times i plus b times j using the unit vectors i and j. This is called writing them as a linear combination, okay? So I can take the vector a b and I can separate its components into a, what's called a linear combination of the standard unit vectors i and j, right? So for instance, 3, 4, I can break down to being 3 times i and 4 times uh, j because to get here, I have to go across 3. So 3 times 1, 0, which gives me 3, 0. So 3, 0 is here. And add to this vector 4 times j. Remember, j is uh, 1. Is 0 1 so 1 in the y direction so I'm scaling that by 4 okay so I scale it by 4 and by adding this vector to this vector I end up with this vector right so remember how we said we can add vectors we can go um, we can draw both of them starting with their initial points at the origin so coming out this way coming out this way and then drawing the parallelogram that they form and then the diagonal from where they're joined at to where they end in the parallelogram is their sum, right? So I have my 3i, 3 times i, I'm scaling the unit vector that goes 1 here by 3, so it's 3 times as long, taking the unit vector that goes here, okay, that's by 1, and I'm multiplying it times 4, I'm scaling it by 4, and by adding them together, 
in the tip to tail method you can see that they create the sum of u right if i did this one and this one here instead you would see that it creates the parallelogram and it's the same diagonal right so no matter which way you slice it you get it the same way so again we call this as a linear we call this a linear combination so we would say that this is 3i plus 4j okay 3i plus 4j so we're writing them in terms of the unit vectors very important uh, skill to be able to do you get all the way to linear algebra we do this in linear algebra all the time then when we're doing it we're not using the unit vectors we're using other vectors which you don't have to worry about until you get there okay but in a physics class this is a very very common thing to do in a calculus 3 course this is also very very common thing to do um, so that's probably the two places where you'll use vectors the most until you get into a linear algebra course which is way 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 at the end of you math majors and physics majors right so <clears throat> i and j form for vectors so if v is the vector a b then we can rewrite v as a times i plus b times j okay where i is the unit vector one zero and j is the unit vector zero one okay so now we'll talk about the dot product the dot product is extremely extremely important it is the method in which we multiply vectors now when we use the dot product and we multiply vectors, we do not get out a new vector. There is a way to multiply vectors to get a new vector. It has very, very important uses, which again, you'll see in a physics course in great detail. Okay, but that's not the purpose of this section, or I don't even think we cover in this class. Um, but the dot product, what it does is it allows us to multiply two vectors together and then we get a number okay we get a scalar out and that scalar basically tells us how much those two vectors had in common okay it's a it's a very very sensitive tricky thing um if you ever heard of three blue one brown you can look up dot product on their youtube video that's three blue one brown they have a really really good set of animations for it it's above the level of this course so it's only if you really care a lot about what it is that this thing represents. But again, <clears throat> basically, it's just us multiplying two vectors together to get out a single number. We do not get out a new vector from the dot product. Okay. So the way that we denote this is u dot v, right? And it's given by the following formula u dot v is ac plus bd. So what we're doing basically is we're multiplying the x terms together, we're multiplying the y terms together, and we're adding those two things together. So a times c, right? So instead of adding them together, we're multiplying them, and we're adding to their product the multiplier of, or the product of, I'm sorry, uh, b times d, right? So you multiply your x's, you multiply your b's, your y's, I should say, and you take those two products and you add them together, so if I'm taking a number plus another number, I'm not getting a vector, I'm getting a single number out, okay? So let's do an example. We want to find each dot product. So again, very very straightforward. I multiply the x's, two times four, right? And I multiply the y's, three times negative one, and I add them together. So that'll give me eight minus three, okay? Which will give me five. Very, very straightforward thing to do is not to too terrible okay similar to adding the vectors together so we're just multiplying and then uh, finding the product of the results so for B same thing take a second and go ahead and do this on your own okay so you should have negative 12 plus 12 so that should give me out 0 okay so <clears throat> properties of the dot product right so for all vectors u v and w and real numbers k the following properties hold true okay the dot product between u and v is the same as the dot product between v and u the dot product is commutative it doesn't matter which order i do the dot product between two vectors i'll get the same answer out okay uh, u dot product v plus w is the same as u dot product v 
plus u dot product w. Okay, so you can distribute the dot product. So if I'm taking the dot product of a sum, it's the same as if I take the dot product with the first one, the dot product with the second two, and then add those two results together. Okay, so it distributes with you across the addition symbol. Okay, same thing on the other side, right? If I have this sum first and then taking the dot product, it's the same as if I took the dot product of u and w and added that to the dot product of v and w. Okay, so it, com it distributes on the left side and on the right side, basically. Uh, ku dot product v is the same as k times the dot product of u and v. You only need to multiply one of them by the scalar. If this was times k and this was times k, we would end up with k squared times the dot product of u and v. Okay, so again, it's just a scalar of one of the vectors gives me a scalar times the entire dot product. Okay, and again, all of these are numbers, right? Um, the dot product with the sum, so this is a vector, v plus w gives me a vector, and then I'm taking the dot product of that vector with another vector, I will get out a number, right? This is a dot product plus a dot product, or a number plus a number. My result here is a number. Same thing here. I will get a number plus another number, which is a number. Here I'm getting a scalar value of a number, because the dot product is a number. Okay. Same thing as if I swapped the size. So zero dot product u is going to just be zero. Okay. U dot product u is the length of u squared. Okay. So it's the squared magnitude of u. This is a very important property here, by the way. All right. So now let's look at some geometric interpretations of the dot product. So this will help us to understand what it is that we're doing in three dimensions and, and in two dimensions as well. Mostly in two dimensions, I guess, for our case. Um, so it's very important, right? To like, what is it we're actually doing? So let's say that theta is the angle between two non-zero vectors that are u and v. So again, I have u and v in the standard position, meaning that they are starting at the origin, okay? And obviously, if u and v are not the same, they'll point in different directions. So theta here is the angle between u and v, right? Since they don't point in the same direction, right? So here theta is between zero and 180 degrees. So we're staying within quadrants one and two, okay? The following properties will hold in. So the cosine of theta, the cosine of my angle, is going to be the dot product between them divided by the length of u times the length of v. So again, this is going to be a scalar value. u dot product v is a number. The length of u is a number. The length of v is a number. So I'm basically going to get a number over a number times a number. So a number divided by a number is always a number. This will not result in a vector. It's very important to understand when our answer is a vector or a scalar value because if your answer is supposed to be a scalar and you give me out a vector, you are way, 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 way off, way off, right? Same with vice versa. If you're supposed to give me a vector and you give me a scalar instead, that's not correct, okay? So let's do an example. <clears throat> we have a few more left okay let me give you let you know so we will get up to six uh six b and then we have a couple of properties to talk about but we only have two more um examples to go through okay so we want to find the angle theta between two vectors so u is three four and v is three one right so again we're going to use this property i know u and v but I have no information regarding theta, so I will use this property to solve for theta. So basically, I'm going to solve for this thing here, and then use cosine inverse to figure out what the angle is. Okay, so if I can figure out this, I know that's equal to cosine theta. I can then take the inverse of cosine to find out what the angle is, and that's what I'm going to do. I don't know theta, but I know my two angles. Okay, so, well, I guess we're starting off. So this is what I need. Okay, so I can find the dot product and I can find the lengths. 
So, 3, 4 dot product 2, 1. And then I want the lengths of the vector u and the vector v. Okay, so this is going to get me 6 plus 4. So that's going to be 10 on top. This is going to be 9 plus 16, or square root 25, or 20, or 5. And then this is going to be square root of 5. So, 10 over 5 square root of 5, just some quick algebra. And that should simplify to 2 over root 5. Okay. If they simplified it. Regardless of how far I simplify it, I need to find uh, theta by cosine inverse. And that gives me about 26.57 uh, degrees. Okay. So for B, we want to do the same thing. So again, let's take a second. Let's have you go ahead and do this yourself right now and see if you can figure this out. So let's go ahead and take a quick pause break and uh, come back. Okay. So in three, two, one, let's go ahead and pause. All right. So hopefully you took the time to do some work and you're back to check your work. So we're going to do the exact same thing we just did, right? So we're using um, cosine theta is the dot product of u and v over the length of u times the length of v. So let's do this one at a time. So on the top, we should get 0, right? I have 2 times 6 plus 2 times negative 6. So same exact thing, but they're opposite. So the top value is going to be 0, which means it doesn't even matter what the lengths are of each of these vectors. There's actually the same length, but it doesn't even matter what they are. I don't have to calculate it because 0 divided by anything is 0. So my cosine of 0, sorry, cosine of theta is going to be 0, right? What value of theta gives a cosine of 0? So meaning there's no movement in the x direction, okay? That's when I'm at. That's right, the 90 degree mark, okay? So that's a very important property here, is that if your dot product is zero, that means that your vectors are orthogonal to each other. They are perpendicular, okay? It's always 90 degrees. If your numerator is gonna be zero, your cosine of theta is zero, meaning that your angle is pi over two or 90 degrees. It'll always be that this is a very 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 important property um, and lets us know about orthogonality it's everywhere in calculus 3 it is everywhere in physics it's everywhere in linear algebra differential equations it's a very very important result um, orthogonality perpendicularity it is a very important um, thing that dri drives a lot of processes okay so for angles theta between 0 and 180 degrees, cosine theta is always, uh, or I'm sorry, not always, will be positive, um, 0 or negative, when theta is less than, equal to, or greater than 90 degrees, respectively. So again, if cosine of theta is negative, sorry guys, then that means that I'm more than 90 degrees because I'm this way in the x direction, right? If I'm zero, that means that I'm 90 degrees. If I am positive, right, my x value is positive, that means I'm in quadrant one, okay? So that's a quick way to know if you have an acute, um, an orthogonal, or an obtuse angle between your vectors is by looking at the sign. Is it positive? Well, then it's acute, okay? Is it zero? Well, then you are perpendicular, right, or orthogonal. Is it negative? Well, then that means you are in quadrant two and you are obtuse, okay? So again, if we put this into a chart, a positive dot product means you have an acute vector. If your dot product is zero, then you are orthogonal to each other or you have a right angle, okay? If your dot product is negative, you're in quadrant two and the angle is obtuse, right? Very, very important. Um, and that's just by looking at the signs, right? So here's a quick note, okay? If u dot product v is zero for two non-zero vectors u and v, then cosine of theta is zero. Again, I said it's very important, so we have its own note at the end, right? So theta is 90 degrees, and u and v are orthogonal to each other, okay? We stop using the word perpendicular 
honestly after precalculus anything after precalculus you'll never even see the words perpendicular again I don't, I don't even know why they use that at the lower levels and they don't just teach you what orthogonality is um, because the mathematical term for perpendicular is orthogonal we never say perpendicular except in algebra and trig courses okay um, again see here or orthogonal vectors that's it for our video. I will see you on the next one. See you guys.